Have you ever found yourself re-watching a beloved classic horror film and thinking, God, I hope no one ever touches this film, it's perfect as it is? Well, that's too bad because nothing is sacred anymore. 2021 looms ever closer, and with it a whole host of horrors morphing and changing form to reveal their new monstrous faces. If I drop my very on-brand pessimism for a second, I can actually admit that some of these remakes may hold potential for greatness. We've got new things coming from huge names in horror, from James Wan to Jordan Peele, and I would be lying if I said I wasn't a bit excited about what they might have in store for us. Some unexpected titles are due to make their reappearances, as well as a few horror classics receiving long overdue makeovers. With some of the biggest names in Hollywood right now attaching their names to these upcoming reboots, they are guaranteed their fair share of attention when they make it to cinemas. So let's just jump in and take a look. I'm Amy from What Culture, and here's 10 horror remakes coming in 2021. Starting at number 10, we've got Candyman. This reboot slash spiritual sequel comes a short 28 years after the original. The concept of the Candyman is taken from Clive Barker's short story, The Forbidden. In the story, a university student, Helen, is doing her thesis on graffiti, and she chooses a rundown looking estate for the focus of her study. She finds a bunch of creepy street art revolving around the urban legend of the Candyman, and begins to suspect that it's linked to a string of recent murders. Spoiler alert, she's right. Interestingly, the original short never mentions the backstory of the Candyman. Instead, this was later added for the film adaptations, so it's now generally understood that the Candyman is the ghost of an African-American man who was brutally murdered for having a relationship with a white woman. Another addition in the films was the idea of summoning him by repeating his name in the mirror, much like the myth of Bloody Mary or Hell Mary. The remake is set in the same Chicago neighborhood as the earlier films, but this time, instead of a uni student student doing her thesis, our protagonist is an artist, Anthony, seeking new inspiration for his pieces. Well, he sure finds it. As he digs deeper into the grisly details of the legend, the wrath of the Candyman is unleashed, and Anthony is forced to come face to face with what's always been his fate. Directed by Nia DaCosta and co-produced with Jordan Peele and Wynne Rosenfeld, this reboot of the Candyman character is set to make it to the big screen at an undetermined date in 2021. Nine. The Children of the Corn. Stephen King films are starting to fill up the release calendar for 2021, with Firestarter, Suffer the Little Children, and Tommyknockers all rumoured to be coming out next year. Alongside these new adaptations, though, we are due a remake of the religious horror classic The Children of the Corn. In a quiet, rural town in Nebraska, a demon walks amongst the corn rows, unbeknownst to the pious Christian families that tend the crops. That is, until one day one kid decides to indoctrinate all the local children into a demonic cult and subsequently murder all of the adults in town. Yeah, that escalated pretty quickly. A few years later, a couple drive through the town and, after hitting a dead kid with their car, decide to wander around the abandoned corn hub, because apparently that's something that sane people would do. Anyway, there's something especially creepy about demonic haunted children, and if that's something you look for in a horror, then you're gonna bloody love this one. From what we can tell, the remake is gonna stick to the same spirit of the the original, but not necessarily the same plot. The official synopsis makes no mention of a corn demon or harvest sacrifices, but instead frames the massacre as a revenge tale. The children murder the adults after their irresponsibility causes the crops to fail, thus ruining the children's future. I'm sure they could have, like, had a meeting or something and talked it out, but I guess that sometimes the corn gets to your brain and things can get out of hand. Eight. Salem's Lot. Okay, so first off, nobody come for me for saying Salem like that. This is apparently how Stephen King himself pronounces it, so that is the rule that I'm following. Speaking of the devil, we are unsurprisingly back on the Stephen King hype train for the second time in this list. The upcoming Salem's Lot remake will mark the third reboot of the King novel, which itself is just an unofficial reboot of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Sorry, Stephen, but a travelling intellectual, a big house, and a team of vampire hunters isn't exactly an original plot. Two big horror names are involved in the production of Salem's Lot. Annabelle Comes Home director Gary Dauberman will be directing and writing, with horror hero James Wan nearby in a producer role. With these two involved, the film is almost guaranteed to be a good time. Or if not a good time, at least one that'll scare the hell out of you in the best kind of way. All previous adaptations have been enjoyed for years now, so hopefully this addition to the collection will be an impressive one. 7. Pinocchio. Yes, you heard that right. Everyone's favourite little 
little wooden real boy is back and this time he wants revenge. No, I'm just kidding, it's not that kind of movie. Whilst it could be vaguely amusing, it could also be just terrible to go down the slasher route with any Disney children's classic. Luckily though, director Guillermo del Toro has much better taste than that and this stop motion reimagining is set to be more dark and twisted than it is plainly horrifying. Taking the beloved original concept and reworking it during the rise of fascism in Italy, the tale of Pinocchio is going to be retold in a way we've never seen it before. Done using stop motion animation and with the influence of Del Toro, the visuals of this film are almost guaranteed to be perfectly unnerving. He's known for his stylish, intelligent films and the Pan's Labyrinth director is likely to bring similar energy to this production. Admittedly, it does sound a bit weird and it may not fit neatly into what everyone would agree suits the horror genre, but I for one trust Del Toro with my life and I'm excited to see what he does with this. Six. The Exorcist. After saying in 2015 that they would never attempt to remake The Exorcist, Morgan Creek Entertainment Group is reportedly working on the denounced remake to hit our screens next year. Do promises count for nothing anymore, guys? We don't know the plot yet, so we don't know how true it'll stay to the original. The production company is keeping their cards close to their chest so far and being very secretive. The basic plot of The Exorcist, if you've been living under a rock and have never heard of it, is that a young girl becomes possessed by a demon after playing playing with a Ouija board. Classic mistake. Her mother enlists the help of two priests to try and blast the demon out, and lots of spooks and scares ensue. Sadly, many of the actors from the 1973 original have since passed away, but Ellen Burstyn and Linda Blair, the central mother and daughter duo, are still knocking about. It wouldn't actually be completely insane to think that they may make an appearance, even just a small one. 5. The Changeling The initial premise of The Changeling sounds all around unimpressive. A morning man moves into a house and and then finds out it's haunted. We're not moving mountains here. Well, following the death of his wife and daughter, this guy thinks that what he needs for recovery is to go to a big, scary, 12-year vacant mansion and just sit it out. What follows is a pretty interesting story of supernatural investigations, long past murders, greed and betrayal. So yeah, probably a good distraction from the tragic death of your wife and kid. The remake is to be directed by Anders Engstrom, best known for directing 2017's Taboo. This modern take is likely to have a slightly different tone to its 40-year-old inspiration. The original has been branded by some as relatively tame and maybe hammed up a bit for modern audiences. There's always scope for some jump scares, tension-filled sequences and surprise twists in any classic haunted house film. Hopefully, The Changeling will be no exception to this rule. Four. The Howling. This bad boy is in the works with Netflix, with it and It 2's Andy Muschietti sat in the director's chair. It was actually at a screening of It Chapter 2 that Muschietti revealed his next goal was to reboot this werewolf classic, and it seems to have come to a pretty timely fruition. The original was directed by Joe Dante, probably best otherwise known for Gremlins, and it follows the story of a journalist pretty much accidentally uncovering a colony of werewolves when she's sent to a retreat by her therapist. There's Sex, there's scandal, there's moonlight transformations, and it's all culminating in a live television broadcast of a woman transforming into a werewolf before being promptly shot dead. Audiences just weren't ready, I guess. After the commercial and critical success of It and its sequel, Muschietti is in a pretty good place right now. It'll definitely be interesting to see what he does with this cult classic to bring it to new audiences. 3. Little Shop of Horrors so, this one has a bit of a different vibe to the rest of the list. People were going crazy over this remake not too long ago because Chris Evans was confirmed as starring in it, in the role of dentist slash abusive jackass Orin Scrivello. Now, this may mean nothing to you, and that wouldn't be surprising. Little Shop of Horrors has definitely always been more of a cult classic than a universally known blockbuster. Basically, a meek flower shop employee comes into possession of a weird new plant and goes on to feed it with human flesh and blood, as is the only logical thing to do. The plant is giant and sentient and bloodthirsty, but it's also a huge moneymaker. So cue the end of humanity. It began as a low-budget 1960s horror, which was then superseded by an off-Broadway musical adaptation in 1982, with music and lyrics written by the genius pair of Disney fame Alan Menken and Howard Ashman. There was a second movie adaptation in 1986, of which our new remake is likely to follow the general plot and presentation. What I want to know this time is what ending we're going to end up with. The real depressing one that was cut after bad audience reactions last time, or a happy-go-lucky redo. Two. 
Spawn. It was 1997 that saw Spawn hit the big screen for the first time, with Mark A. Z. Dippe, otherwise best known now for the cinematic masterpiece Garfield's Pet Force, as director. Things this time are going to take a slightly different tone. Todd McFarlane, the original creator of the Spawn character, has written and will direct the film, claiming at a fan expo in 2019 that he's already directed it a thousand times in his head. He told comicbook.com in 2017 that Spawn is going to be a very different comic book movie. There'll be no villain he defeats, no gaudy fight scenes. Instead, Spawn himself will be the spectre haunting people. It'll be much more a horror than an action. The character Spawn himself has been known to wield a variety of weapons alongside his supernatural abilities as a hellspawn assassin, leaving loads of scope for different kinds of horror visuals. Good thing the film is R-rated because we know that means we can get our gore on. Finally, number one, The Others. With the current situation keeping some of us locked away at home 24-7, there really could be no more fitting story than The Others to make a reappearance. The 2001 original sees a widowed mother isolate herself and her children in a remote countryside mansion. The house is kept in relative darkness as the children both suffer from a rare disease making them very photosensitive. Shut away in a dark, quiet house with the same people every single day? That sounds familiar, doesn't it? The original is set in 1945 as World War II rages on, but it's rumoured that the remake could be changed and modernised. The plot and setting could potentially be more reflective of what current audiences are accustomed to. Renee Tab, a producer for the remake, has commented on the film's timely development. She told Deadline that it's an almost eerie and uncanny thing how timely the themes are today. Self-isolation, paranoia and fear, and of course the intense desire to protect our children and ourselves from harm. And that's it for our list of 10 horror remakes coming out in 2021. If you know of any more that we've missed off, make sure to let us know in the comments down below. And remember to check out whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this every single day. I've been Amy from What Culture, and until next time, I'll be watching Garfield's Pet Force on repeat.